Hey everyone, this is Wiley. I'm here. I'm here at IO with my main man Patrick over here from Heli Nation. Last time we talked to him was at MDX. Dumped a whole bunch of knowledge on us, so you know, I'm really glad to have him back for year number two. Patrick, how are you doing, man? It's good, babe. Good. Hey, hey, everybody. The uh, we're out here at IO. It's the weather's holding, which is wonderful. You know, we got uh, the world track right behind us. If you hear yeah, machines screaming by, uh, everyone's having a great time. Uh, the party every night. It's uh, it's fun. Yeah, Patrick's always good to be with. He's set up right over with the Team Black Sheep tent over there. That's massive. But he's always got a bunch of toys over there. It's always fun to talk to him. Patrick, how's family life, man? Family life's good, babe. Family life's good. I got my son. My oldest is out here. He's uh, going to be a junior at ISU this year. So, uh, you know, he's doing well. And this is his last stint before school every year. You know, last year, same thing. Last week before his last week of break, I got him working like a dog, you know, 12 hours a day. The uh, But, you know, it's... I'm putting the I'm I'm stroking the checks for college, so he's uh, he's got to work. He's got to work. He, uh, but no, he's good. And the kids are all good, you know. But, you know, my uh, my oldest daughter is gonna is a senior this year in high school, so I have two in college next year. That's a scary proposition. Yeah. Uh, oh boy. Here we then, go. And then you got you know I've got a one in junior high, and I've got uh, the teeny one's gonna be second grade. So you are in for the long haul for the business. Oh but. brother, I am. It's it's. There's no doubt about it. No doubt. Retirement, you know, is a is a uh, is a is a is a distant thought and a hope and a dream. Yeah, well. but you know what? I've been to your website a couple of times. I like the overhaul. It looks good, man. You like it? You like it? Cool. We, we worked on it for a long time, and the uh, you know we're, we're looking at different platforms as well. We're always looking to make it better. Uh, this is for everybody out there. I mean, don't please feel free to reach out to us. You see anything you don't like? Uh, changes, thoughts. Um, we're always looking. We're, our ears are always open to the community. Uh, we try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, you guys have probably noticed we continue to have uh, what we feel is the best selection of parts uh, on the planet Earth with over 90 brands. So, I mean, if, if we don't have it, it's probably not built. Um, the uh, So it's, uh, but if we're missing anything or you see anything with the website or any issues, please hit us up. But we've, we've done everything we can to make it uh, better and better. And, you know, once you have over 3,000 parts and over 90 brands, the uh, it's really hard to keep it organized. So it's easy to find things, uh, but rest assured, we have pretty much everything. The uh, if you can't find it, reach out to us. Uh, John's always available during the week on the phone, during business hours. He answers that phone. He even answers sometimes on weekends. But uh, we actually have we actually answer the phone. Uh, so you can call us and talk. Uh, we enjoy it. So. Yep, that's one thing I hear all the time from the pilots. Great customer service, lot knowledgeable people. Okay, it's just not customer service. You actually need knowledgeable people. So that's good to hear. So uh, let let's dive into some uh, topics that uh, are rarely spoken, but it's really affecting our industry, and that is. Uh, Trump's new tariff. Uh, sure. What can you tell me about that? How is it affecting you guys? Well, you know, so it, I can't say it snuck up on us, but I can say it was still a shock to the system. So, you know, as you know, you know, we got for this for I.O. It's our favorite event every year. This second year we've been here. But, uh, I mean, it was so much fun last year. We're here again this year. And, again, just incredible good times. So, you know, we do a special sale for I.O. And uh, we've got the 15% sale going. I launched that sale uh, as uh, John was leaving town with everything, and I was coming the next day. And I, we'd already had got a first couple smaller tariff bills, you know, because it started like July sixth or fifth, whatever the hell it was. The uh, and I start the sale, and um, you know, literally four hours later, I get my first big tariff bill, and uh, and it was kind of a shock to the system. It was like, whoa, well, wait a minute. <laughs> and uh, and it was from a month ago, right? So I mean, because they're about a month behind on these, and I never paid attention because tariffs are really they're never really there's hardly anything. It, that stuff is toys, which so doesn't even pay a tax typically, all these different things. So it's um, it, it did you know it, that one kind of was a blow to the system. So we haven't figured out what we're doing yet with it. I, I will tell you this: it's working. Uh, what what what's being done as far as the trade wars go, it's working our advantage from a market standpoint. You know, the U.S. market's way up. Um, Chinese market is way down. Uh, they're really, it's really hitting them hard. Uh, so I, feel, so what I feel is going to happen is going to be, there's going to be a deal fairly soon. I think it's going to get worked out. I think we're going to have a little bit of short term, short term pain for long term gain. I think um, because you, you just can't the ramp the cloning. I mean, it hits our industry between the eyes with the cloning and the, and the theft of IP and everything else that's happening. Uh, something had to be done. Um, the uh, I'm not a politician. I'm not an expert on. on, on you know, international trade by any means, um, but I do know there's a problem, and there's been a problem for a long time. 
And uh, the better the economy is in the U.S., the better it is for all the businesses, not just the hobby industry, for everybody. Um, so, uh, you know, I think it's going to worked out quickly just based on what's happening in the markets. So I, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it going away quickly. As far as we're plan, what we're going to do, I, I don't have – I don't even have that for you. I know there's already been announcements out there made, big announcements as far as raising prices, not raising prices, and all these different things. Um, we have to assess. You know, because you know the, the first big one I got was big enough to you know make an impact. Um, the uh, which I didn't, I wasn't expecting. Uh, truthfully, I wasn't expecting it to make an impact, a big impact. Uh, but then when you get that kind of tax bill and you go, whoa, whoa, <laughs> wait a minute, hold on a second, that's real money. That's like you know that's real. So um, I, I I'm hoping for a quick fix, so I don't have to make any adjustments. Um, I will say for everyone out there that's listening, uh, it's Saturday. The sale goes through Monday. Take advantage of it. I don't know how many sales are going to be going off in the near future just because, you know, for you to have sales, you have to have some kind of margin to work with to, to be able to even do that. And, uh, you know, I think that things are going to fall off the table as far as sales and different things that are, you know, throw-ins. And I, I think there's going to be probably some adjustments that are made in the short term, um, but that won't even have much of an impact truthfully against what the, the bills that are coming in. And like I said, it was from a month ago. So I've got a month of these going to be coming in. And uh, I, I didn't even start. I, I, I had my mind coming here, so I haven't even sat down to kind of even look at it and start trying to figure out what that looks like for the whole last month. Um, but uh, but you know, I mean, well, you know, this, our, our markups. You know, we got 15, 20, 25 percent markup. Yeah, it's you know, not a lot before you sh- before you get it shipped in, before you ship it out, before you throw in free things and free shipping and all the other crap. The um, there's not much markup there, so. If you're gonna, you know, if there's gonna be a 25% on, on top on costs, you know, you're gonna have zero markup. And uh, you know, can you survive long term that way? Of course not. No one can. Everyone dis- everyone will disappear at that point. I mean, all the, you know, I feel I feel bad for the smaller stores, um, but I feel bad for you know, you know us, Pyro, Get FPV, uh, even ReadyMade, because uh, just the, the amount of stuff that we bring in on a day in and week in and month in basis, um, those are gonna be massive bills. You know, I mean, for smaller companies, you know, they're going to get hit with it, and they don't maybe don't have the revenue to make up for it in the short term. Um, but uh, it's, uh, but like I said, I mean, I, I, I feel not to get political on anybody, but I feel that it's going to in the short, it's going to fix itself pretty quickly, based on the markets. It's working. If it wasn't working, I'd be more scared. But it seems to be working based on, and I watch the financials. I watch. I mean, I, 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 pay, I pay attention. Besides the business, I pay attention to the financial markets and everything else, um, because I would like to retire before I'm 116. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. The kicker on that one is that it's coming late, and it's not a part of your original invoice. Correct. And, and nobody's really seeing that until it's like, oh, got to pay more bills, and that hurts. Right. And you got a month left. Now you got a month. Now you have a month to think about. So now I mean I could adjust orders. I can adjust. I mean there's there's different things you can do, right? To you know maybe you bring in less things for a little while while this f- filters out, so it won't be you know a thousand of this, five hundred of that, ten thousand of this, two hundred. I mean it maybe it'll be you know smaller orders to kick you by, um, to to uh, j- just to hope in the hopes that the light switch gets turned off. Right. You know what I mean because you know it's, it's you know we, we carry a lot of inventory, so we have a lot of inventory already in stock, uh, a ton. Actually, so it's not, um, you know, I would prefer not to have my entire inventory turned over with that huge, you know, all yeah. with the, the huge tariffs on it, and then right. tariffs go away, and then what do you do? Now you're sitting on all the stuff. So, I'm, so we're it's we're going to be much more strategic with the way that we bring parts in. I I definitely feel like when in the short term, like large companies aren't going to want to invest in bulk products anymore, and like new products that you know you don't. You don't know if it's going to sell. You don't right. really want to invest large into it because you're going to be ending up holding there's, the bag. There's more miss than hit right now, too. I mean, it used to be more. Like, last time we talked to Megatron next time, there was more hit than miss. There was more things that were you brought in and, and it sold really well. And he has a f- couple little things that maybe didn't as much. And it was, what, it was what it was. There's more miss than hit right now in the market. And uh, and that's a whole nother layer. So you got to be more strategic, which just takes more time, more time consuming, you know, more, you know, more sitting there doing what no one likes to do, breaking down the numbers. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just prefer to say, OK, that I know that that's great. I've got people asking for it. Let's bring in, you know, 500 of that, 200 of that, whatever. And uh, and now it's going to be more like, well, I don't know, maybe 20, let's bring in 20 of those, see how it goes. And, you know, if they're out of them next week, whatever. But I will tell you the suppliers, the way they've been reaching out, I mean, they are all feeling it. 
all the suppliers in China, all the suppliers, I mean, all the brands are feeling it. So I've got, you know, I don't know if they've all doubled their sales forces or what they've done, but uh, I get nailed 25 times a day. From oh, the sales force. Yes. You know? and, and a lot of these brands are like ones that like, you know, before was like, well, we're, we're, well, we're sold out. You have to wait. Now it's more like, hey, listen, you know, we, you know, we have here, we have these now. Take, 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 take. And I'm like, well, that's great. But I, I, if I have them, I'm not taking more at this point. So I'm definitely not, I'm definitely not gambling on the aggressive side now. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, definitely. which 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 sucks because the truth of the matter is we like to be able to throw sales out there, you know, because sales are on based on value, right? So what we do, if I get a part that I bring in five hundred of, and we sell a few hundred of them pretty quick, and then it, it slows down a little bit on that part, maybe I throw a sale on it to go ahead and move through the rest of the inventory, right. because it, so basically then the, you know our our peeps are getting good deals on those parts. Well, if I only bring in two hundred of it, they all sell out. I mean, I don't have anything to even sell at that point. There's no, there's no, you know what I mean. So, it's 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 not even even the tariff that does it. The tariff, you know, there's there's it's a it's a snowball chain reaction really all the way down the line, all the way down the supply chain. So it's um it's it's just yeah, that's what. Do you feel like um, you know, like the bank goods of the world are they going to be hit harder? And it's finally going to shift customers away from them. No, because you know, you got to remember Banggood's model, right? Banggood's going to send it from China, and you're going to pay it. The consumer's going to pay it when it gets to them. Is how they're going to do it. Um, so consumers going to get whacked from buying from Banggood. So after they wait two, three weeks or a month and get some get something that they that they hope is a real part as opposed to a clone part, and it gets here, and then they pay it, then they pay a tariff on a tax on it uh, at the consumer level. You know, it's just it's a mess. So. I don't know how they're going to get hit on it. I just don't know. I mean, Banggood's Banggood. It's just... I feel like the shippers, because we were talking to some other people, in which the shipper now, when they deliver your product, they also deliver a bill, which is not what you're going to be used to. And I feel like the consumer at that point will be like, they're going to think twice about buying from there because they're going to hit get hit twice with cost oh yeah yeah and they're not paying yeah i mean it's 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 crazy you save a couple bucks to buy it from there and then you may hope that you get the right part because you got to remember how bingo's model is it's like an, it's it's not quite like an amazon from a standpoint different sellers but at the same point it is there's a lot of i mean they're just there's they're selling product that's coming in from a third party that i mean that they don't they don't really have they don't really control so it's um, you know like your Alibaba's and all that. I mean, and Amazon's you got problems with Amazon too. You got to really watch. I'll tell you people. I'll tell everyone this straight up. And this is not advertising for me. I you know I care less. I mean, we love your business and love to have your business. But just make sure at least when you buy something um, on an Amazon or an Alibaba or, or or any of these groups. I mean, I would never buy from Banggood. I just tell you straight up, it's just insanity. But you do what you want. Everyone everyone does their thing. But. Um, you need to make sure that you're what if you're buying from one of these sellers you need to look at who is actually selling it and make sure that that's a viable dealer because there's it's rampant out there there's there are things out there floating around you know there's so much cloning it's disgusting it's it, it's and it's and you buy that and you go oh i'm buying this and you know and you buy it from some seller you don't know who that seller is they don't sell hobby parts, so how do they have the part? I mean, how do you? How can you get, you know know that you're getting the right part? You're getting no warranty. There's no you have zero warranty if you're not authorized for any of these guys, any real brand. You're right. I mean, it's so it's um, it, you still have those pitfalls out there. You just gotta be smart about it. You know, you just have to be smart about it. I mean, yeah, can you save a buck or two? But what if you get something that's not the right part, not real? Uh, and then what do you do about it? It's a pain in the neck to go through any process to get anything returned. Uh, or fixed, um, or or you'll go through warranty, go through the manufacturer, say what is this? What's the serial number? And there's no serial number, or whatever, because it's not a real part. I mean, it's just we run into all of it. We've seen it all. I mean, it's just it's 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 a constant. And um, you know, just from an education standpoint, just be smart. Buy from buy from who you trust. Buy from authorized dealers. Um, there's some really really good ones in this country. Um, and uh, no one's getting rich uh, as much as there's stories out there that you know everyone's oh everyone's rich in, in this industry. It's not the case. You know, understand that in, uh, from a cost of doing business, you get hit a lot. People go, well, why can't I just return this? It's broken. I mean, I, yes, I fried it, whatever. But you understand it. When I buy a T-shirt and wreck it, I can return it. It's like, but understand, you buy a $20 T-shirt, you know, they bought it for $3, $2. So you can sell a couple T-shirts. You can afford to take all kinds of T-shirts back. When you, when you flip that model and you've got 20% market, 20% markup, 20%, 15% markup, you know, you have to sell 10, 15 of an item just to make up for one faulty return that you get, that you can't get credited because it's, you know, it's so 
it, it's, it's still it still hobbies, man. I mean, it's you know the ones I feel the worst off for are the, are the brick and mortars, the the, the full hobby shops. Um, it's that's a rough gig. It's a really rough gig, and uh, I wish you know we, we supply probably 80, 80 hobby shops around the country, and uh, I wish that they could do better. Um, the uh, but they just I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, it's I've rough. seen a lot of hobby shops close up. I've seen small retailers and even online stores close up this year. There's so many. It's 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 crazy. I mean, in Chicago, we've got a couple of the big ones that uh, over the last couple of years that have closed. They've been there for 50 years, 60 years, 80 years. You know, I've been doing it since it was like you know the Pinewood Racing, you know, crap, and <laughs> from yep, you know the 20s know. and 30s. You know, these, these little hobby shops, and they're and they're gone, and uh, it's. You know that that's brutal, but I can tell you it's it's that's tough, man. It's hard for us to keep up just with the FPV world and and you know and what we do. You know we do a little bit of the heli stuff still, um, the uh, and we do you know FPV drone stuff, and now we're doing, we're doing wings, and uh, just keeping up with just that little part of the market in the in the hobby world is tough. Now you go go to a hobby shop and they need to have you know nine or ten different full segments and then understand everything deeper down. And you just can't do it. So you walk in a hobby shop, people don't want to buy it because the people don't know what they're talking about. Some shops have that person that's really, really good and knows this or knows that, but none of them know all this stuff. Right. And um, so that makes it that makes it rough too. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. tough. Yeah. It's really tough because you can't specialize in brick and mortar. Can't do it. You can't open up an FPV shop just FPV brick and mortar and only up only brick and mortar. Yep. I mean, there's literally you literally have a zero point zero percent chance of of surviving for any long period of time. Truth. I actually tried that part time with a, a like a hybrid shop, mm-hmm. and we would have like hype weeks where everybody comes in, and then we would just have like pure dead, pure weeks. nothing. Yeah. And what do you do when there's pure nothing? You, you have you, you, there's no, nothing to pay the bills, anything. It's 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 brutal. And uh, I mean, I've owned multiple businesses. I've owned, I owned a restaurant. I've owned. Uh, I had a video game store. So I mean, I've been down this road. Um, the video game store was okay. You had a constant flow of traffic, all that kind of stuff, and you had different game systems and stuff. And video games were massive business. Um, this is back in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, when it was a massive growing business. So it made sense. But even us, you know, after supporting the family for, I think, uh, I think four or five years, I think five, five years maybe, because when I opened it literally when my oldest was born, uh, five years, and then we got squeezed out by the Best Buys and Toys R Us. Uh, you know, because yes. Sony PlayStation, I think it was PlayStation 2 launched, and I had a couple hundred orders for my best clients. Um, and because uh, we had a shop where you come in and try games, you get, I mean, we had tournaments. I mean, it was, we, I, we do, I, it's I like do, a hobby store for when, video I, games. when I do something, I try, I try and do it right. Let's put it that way. The, uh, we had a blast with it. Um, the, uh, but then, you know, we got, uh, Sony gave us like 12. You know, Toys R Us <laughs> got stacks of them. Best Buy got stacks of them. You know, so my best clients are sitting there coming in on lunch day, and I, I don't have the, I don't have the machines for them. Yep. You know, it's I tough. mean, it's it's uh, because you know you get squeezed out as a small guy. So it was, um, but that, and that's all hobby shops are for the most part is, is a small guy in the middle on, on a lot of that stuff. Yeah, it's you the know? family businesses, man. Then they have to go out of business. It's just sad for them to go it out. Is, it is sad. It is sad. It doesn't make it. It's brutal. Now the ones that have been doing it for a decent amount of time have you know the business savvy and and have enough experience to where they're gonna have a lot of job offers coming out of it. But no one wants to go from working for yourself to work for somebody else. I mean, it's just not. That's that's brutal. Yep. I mean, I've, I've gone back and forth on it myself personally. The um, they have the business, and then close it, sell it, and then move on. You know, go work for somebody. And then I was like, you know, I want to go back to work for myself and back and forth. So, the I can promise you, I like working for myself much better, <laughs> as anybody should. It's more hours, but you're in control of your own destiny. Exactly, exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. So, like uh, right now, you know, in 2018, how many like new parts are you seeing? Is oh my it God. like it's is crazy. It crazy? It's stupid. It, honestly, it's um, it, it, you can't even keep up with it. Um, it's nuts. I mean, new brands coming out, but some of the stuff's cool. Like here, Speedy B kind of came out of left field, right? And uh, not really advertising Speedy B, but I can tell you about the parts. And I love them. I mean, their stuff is that is innovative, small brand coming in, and uh, it sells extremely well. But every the, the little USB adapter, so you don't have to use a computer. It's fantastic. I mean, that's I mean, it's innovation, and that's and that's cool stuff. So you got you know you got a couple little small brands kind of coming out of the woodwork that are, that are really cool. Uh, and then all the big brands are still trying to reinvent themselves yeah, on a daily basis. Um, so it's uh, 
Yeah, I mean, but new parts. I mean, everyone's. I mean, look at cameras. Run Cam has a new camera every week. It seems like Fox there is whole new versions of all their cameras every three weeks. I mean, it's just it's and trying to keep up with that. And you bring in those cameras, hundreds and, and sometimes thousands at a time, and then you know, and all of a sudden here's a here's your Micro Pro V2, and here's your Micro Pro 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 V6, yeah, uh, 3.89 with uh, this lens, and this was. I mean, just holy. Cr- I mean, what do you? I mean, you it's it's silly. It is silly because, like, in order to be on that hype, you have to be releasing new stuff. Right. Unfortunately, like, you shrink the amount of people that pay attention at a certain point because you do. You, you can't. Do. You can't buy everything. Nobody can buy. Well, no. there's a few people maybe. No. We well, don't even want to. I mean, you got to. You know, it, it's hard to even standardize right now. That's the big thing. The next big kick, I think, and I'm hoping that uh, you know, with partnership with TBS and everything going. I hope that this this starts to come to fruition. But there needs to be some standardization. I think you know, if you look at ESCs, you look at flight controllers, you look at you know the way we connect all these things. Um, I think that was something that will help everybody in the industry and make it more things more accessible especially for more pe- new people coming in, is standardizing the pinouts and all that kind of stuff. Standardizing, you know, from a 4 one ESC to a, to a flight controller. I mean, you can, every, every single manufacturer does a completely different pinout. And then, and then the, like, some of these boards have reversed on the bo- top and bottom, so we're, depending on where you're soldering to, and people are blowing things up. And they're blowing it up because they, you know, literally, like, you'd have to sit back and study this and, like, and take your time. And, you know, I, I don't know... I don't know who has time anymore, but it's, that, that seems to be... If you've got three, four, five machines trying to keep in the air all the time and adding new parts to them, it should be easy to do that, and we need to make that easy. Um, the And that's... Uh, I think that is hopefully going to come. I don't think it'll come this year or next year, but I think by 2020, I think we'll start seeing some standardization a little bit. So, I mean, that same plug, that same 8-pin... You know, connector will be go. You know, plug it into your flight controller and your in your ESC. Doesn't matter if Acon makes it or Hobby Wing makes it or you know or DYS or whoever the hell makes it. Um, the uh, into the boards, whether it's a Talon board or or, or a, you know a Pyro board. You know, all these same. You know, then you know you're mixing and matching. You're playing. You decide you want to change something. It's it's put put done, and you're off and running. You know, you're not blowing things up because I I could tell you I still see people blowing things up constantly constantly or plug it in well the eight pin plugs into the eight pin spot so it should be fine right no <laughs> you need to repin it you need to look at the pins on both sides and nobody wants to do that and it's no, no fun to repin anything and um I, I think that that will be a help it's just not here yet because no one's agreeing no one talks no one's talking to each other on that stuff as far as the major manufacturers yeah and, i'm kind uh, of surprised there's no governing body for that because for a lot yeah. of hobbies there are there is and there You're is right. they do a good job they know? do they do this is we gotta remember we're still it's you know feels like we're, we're doing well in the industry um but uh i think we're still uh somewhat infancy i mean compared to you know i mean rc cars all that kind of stuff the uh and where it goes i don't know uh, me personally as i watch i see a lot of uh, people who are in this hobby for a long time a lot of good big names in this hobby that are out of it gone done see ya i'm done with this i don't want to do it anymore not interested. Too much drama. Too much. Too much crap in the industry, and uh, you're seeing a, a ton of people. I mean, it just said, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, Night Fury. Just a couple days ago. Done. I'm out. I'm gonna race cars. God love them, guys. And it's a talented, great guy. Great guy in the industry. Everyone loves him. The guy will give you a shirt off his back. Will help you with anything um, at any time, and uh, and he's gone just like that. I'm done. Head and head. You know, I'm out of it. You know, and uh, you know, I don't know all of his all of his reasons for it. But I can tell you that he's not a drama guy. He doesn't like the drama. And I can tell you the, uh, you know, is that a contributing factor? I don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean it's, it is it's for a lot. Of, it is for a lot of people because we talk yeah. to a lot of long-term uh, clients. I mean, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hanging up. I don't want to fly anymore. It's like, well, you don't want to fly anymore. This is like still one of the coolest, mo- you know, most the highest, uh, you know, uh, testosterone, uh, uh, adrenaline type things you can do for 300 bucks, four or 500 bucks. <laughs> You know, speaking of, like, people cutting out, I mean, I've seen a lot of that. I mean, from your perspective, because I feel like a lot of people don't think we're slowing down, and they get this weird idea that everybody's still doing well. And that's kind of, like, propagated to where they're not accepting new people as much as they should. Right. And that's a big problem, because, like, if like if you're not rapidly going double digits at least you're actually shrinking correct because other people are really just passing you by eventually you'll just be the the low dog yep like have you seen that 
You know what? I've seen some. So it's it's more about so you know that that's a problem. This is this is a very expensive event for MotoGP to throw on. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, and phenomenal event. And it's not nearly. I mean, you would think after last year and how great last year was, you would think it would be double the people here, and we'd be going crazy trying to get you know. Uh, who's going to qualify for World Cup today, right? Right. And, uh, I mean, yesterday, you know, team races, team qualifying, didn't have to worry about qualifying because there wasn't even 16 total teams. And last year you had to qualify to even make it in there. So, I mean, it was, so it's, um, I don't know, it, it, it's a little scary to me. Um, I mean, there's some talk out there and there's some some big words being thrown around out there uh, from, from uh, you know, here and there. You know, oh, well, it's growth. It's, oh, it's all growth. Yay. And uh, there, there's some gamesmanship being thrown out there with that. And uh, we're just not, not into that. I mean, we're still growing. Uh, I know Pyro's still growing. I know is still growing. But it's not at the di- at the at the double digit growth that we've seen over the last few years. Right. Uh, and, and that and that's because you've got less people coming in and more people going out. Um, I like a purge, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's it seems like it seems like there's like there's there's there's. Well, you know, maybe maybe it's gonna be. It's probably a short term thing because this is just way too cool of a hobby. I mean, this is way too much fun, way too cool of a hobby. Um, the uh, so I, I think it's a short term thing as far as things the growth slowing down to what it you know from what it was. Right. But what do I know? I mean, it's, yeah. it's it could change in a second, right? That's that's the nature of hobbies. But yep. it, it seems like we not get, the, not getting much good press lately. Yeah, you know I <laughs> that's mean, actually kind of true. You know what I mean? You got you got you know guys putting bombs on them and flying into you know consulates and stuff. You know it's the uh, you're not getting good press and that uh, and what happens then is you know you're you're your best pilots out here are the kids, right? I mean these young I mean you know the Evan Turner's of the world. I mean yeah you know I mean so fast so ridiculous. You know these young kids and what's going to happen is that you're not going to see them out even getting started in this. If their parents aren't, in, are, you know, you know what I mean. Right. So, the, so, if you have so much bad press, then the parents are not going to go out and buy their kid their first drones or all that kind of stuff. Going to keep stay away from it, right? Because the bad press. Um, so that hurts you for future. It hurts you for now and for the future. Um, so we need to find a way to get good press somehow in the industry, and we haven't seen that in a while. It there hasn't been true. good press in a while. Yeah. You know. The only, so, yeah, the only real big marketing thing right now is, you know, when DRL or DR1 is on, you know, the channels. But that's right. usually only for, like, two months. Right. The rest of the year, it's dead. There's nothing. There's yeah. absolutely nothing. Right. There's, there's live streaming, and that's getting better, and there's some groups doing that. and that's the uh, But the groups, I mean, I don't see the groups growing. I see the same people. And I love them. I mean, just, I mean, my, my, our Chicago, Milwaukee groups, and the Kansas City groups, love all these guys the, uh, that, we, that we sponsor all across. and uh, But it's the same people. I don't see the new people coming in. I mean, any of these groups. Yeah, it's and, tough. And that's and that and that's a problem, you know, because you should have people. I mean, every but about every week you have an event, you should have a new person out there that's you know asking people, hey, what's going on? I got I got my drone. I'm here for my first race. Awesome, you know, high five. Come over here, sit with us. You know, let, let's talk. Let's figure you out and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I, it's not happening. It's not happening. And it's it's a bit rough because I've heard of, from chapters all across the nation that you know their numbers are dropping, but you know the core people are usually uh, still sticking. They're around. staying because you know once once you're in it for a little while, it's fantastic. So the guys who have left, I've left. I think I've left a lot because of drama and such. Because I mean, it's just way too much fun. This is way too much fun. Way it too cool. Way too much fun. I mean, it's 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 ex- it's 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 expensive, but it's for what you do, what you get out of it, and the adrenaline rush and everything else of it. It's cheap for what it gives you. I mean, uh, you know. Physically, I think psychologically, physio, physio, whatever. I mean, it just—it's, I mean, it's a rush every single time out there. It is a lot of fun. uh, So, I mean, to leave that, I mean, like night fear—you got to replace with something, right? So you're back to cars because that gives (laughs) us the same rush. I mean, to me, it's the same kind of rush because I race, I race motorcycles, race cars. I've done all that. You know, I know Bruce Daly's, you know, doing his car more than anything else again now, and the yeah, because that's that. But that's outside of that, or you know, it's it's there's not a whole heck of a lot out there. Because you can't do that stuff on a public street. <laughs> That's true. That's not to get true. that kind of rush. <laughs> That's true. All right. Speaking of uh, being here at I.O., you actually brought one of the biggest teams out here. You're yeah. really representing Heli Nation well. I like those jerseys, Thank man. you. Thank you. We're, we are proud of the jerseys, proud of the team. I tell you what, you know, our shirts are, are nice. You know, everything we've kind of done, I've always been kind of like, well, that's cool. 
the uh, so I really wanted the jerseys to be like right, you know. And and as you design them and you go through, because we I mean, we took three months designing these jerseys. So this, this was this was not like a oh yeah we'll take that. This was like you know boom put this do this and the lines and then uh, Svitali put the you know started adding lines to it and we had the great I mean just. We spent a lot of time on this. And it looks good, man. Honestly, I, I can't be I can't be any happier. I couldn't be any happier. They turn out perfect. They pop. Love them. Uh, the team's represented, looking good. Um, they're just a blast. Just we're having a blast. It's no, fun, fun being under the team. The, I can uh, I can times. see you guys anywhere. It could be like 300 yards out. It's like, oh, that's a Heli Nation yes. guy. So, yes. <laughs> it's it's doing well. So. Uh, are you guys having fun out here? I, I've seen it. Fun. Yeah, of I've course. Seen. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We had a little snafu on the uh, team race yesterday, and we had a lot of excitement. I and I was literally like, I was super excited, and I came down. So like, I didn't, I didn't party much last night uh, after, because uh, we had, um, we came in second in, a, in our in our heat race, and and. Uh, Travis didn't have enough laps uh -huh. for the twenty percent. Oh, so, that got you, didn't it? So we got knocked. So we got knocked out, and it was it was so much fun because the race was tight the whole time. You know, it was like within everyone was on like same lap for most of that race, back and forth. It was one of the most exciting races I've ever been involved in because uh, I was kind of keeping the track of the laps and and it, it and, I, and I take total blame for it. I screwed up, and you know, because Travis had uh, when he went up first, he had video issues on his first run, so he only got one lap in, and then his second run he got six laps, so he had seven. And I and I needed I needed to get him back out there in the last couple of minutes, but we were so tight, and Nub is so fast. Uh, yep. I mean, if you got to you got to put the goggles on and we'll see Nub go. So I'm sitting there going, well, we're right there, we're right there, with, you know, with in uh, second place, third place, but on the same lap within seconds. So I threw, we had to throw Nub up there because uh, you know to make sure, and uh, I miscalculated. Um, because I mean, it, it's it's anarchy. You, oh yeah. You know, those yeah, I was anarchy. over there. I was Dude, we're sweating. We're running around, chasing, screaming. It's just it's a it's a great time. We had uh, we actually put some some I think a lot of it on live video on the uh, on the group uh, to check out. But um, but it was honestly we had so much fun, excited, jumping around at, after the race that you know, it was all worth it. But yeah. Hey, we got knocked out. There's always next year. Yeah, but well, it's, yeah. Th I thought three was a charm. We we do better this time because it's our third team event and. Uh, and we uh, we missed it again, but it's okay. It, it was it went well. It was fun. You know, we brought Mikey Olivier on now as like team captain, and uh, the guy's just oh god, he's got more. He's got he's got way more energy than I do, which is crazy. And uh, he, he was fun. He's out there as the pit guy, just running, diving, barrel rolls into. The <laughs> Those guys are insane. The pit guys are insane. They're insane. They're insane. <laughs> I, I told him I'm not going on the other side of the net after Mega Drone X almost getting whacked in the face. I said I'm not going. <laughs> yeah. I said I said, I said I'll, I'll do the, I'll, I'll be back here and I'll just kind of manage it from back here. But there's no chance I'm going out, out there with those things flying, ripping around like that. <laughs> it's always the first crash, and that chain of events will screw everything yep, else up. Yep, it's that yep. you're just dreading for that first crash. It's like oh, now my life just got tough. Yep, yep, yep. And once I get my face taken out by a drone at full speed, so that's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Man. But I'm glad that you were out here. It was actually fun watching you guys compete. Uh, you got a couple of really loud and large personalities yes, out we, there. Yes, we do. That's that's what it's about. We're having fun with it. And it's it's always fun to watch. Louder, you guys. louder than me, which is great. That's wonderful. I can, I can, I can, I can be more. I can, I can hold back a little bit. <laughs> oh man. Well, Patrick, really good talking to you. Anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up? No. The um, I don't know. Just. Um, like I said, guys, anything you see, uh, any issues, um, please reach out to us. Um, we're always we're always available, always. And, uh, you know, we care about the community, and obviously we're not here without you guys. So, um, I mean, that's 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 where we're at. It's always it's always about you guys. You know, when I opened this up, it was because I wasn't having fun because I couldn't get my parts the way I wanted them, when I wanted them, as fast as I wanted them. And I opened up to because I, I don't want anyone else to have to experience that. And fast forward, you know, all these years later, and you know, there's a lot of companies out there doing that. Um, that and none of them did it back when we started doing it. So, the uh, I'm glad for that. It makes life much easier for everybody to have fun. Have fun in this hobby, enjoy it. Um, if you like drama, you know, there's places for that uh, in the hobby. Uh, if you don't like yes, drama, there there's plenty of places like that for the hobby as well. Our group, the Heli Nation uh, group. On Facebook is a no drama. We, we we throw we literally delete drama as soon as we see it. Uh, it's a no drama group, so it's a great place for people helping each other. And uh, I'm very active. We're always active on there. So if you need anything, um, let's see here. What else? What else? What else? What else? Well, and be smart. I tell yeah. you one more thing. Be smart about what you pay attention to as far as the noise out there for parts. Um, the uh, there there's there you know pay attention to who's getting paid 
to say things are great and better than something else. Um, and I'm not going to throw names out there. I'm not going to go down that path. But I'm going to tell you, um, there's some things out there that absolutely, if it smells like it stinks, uh, it does stink. You're right. If it walks like a duck, smells like a duck, talks like a duck, it's a duck. So be smart about what you're doing. Um, be smart about you know what you're buying based on, you know, if there's a, some all these glowing reviews, on, and it always seems to be the same people, same place that has these glowing, super glowing reviews, the best ever. Um, understand how much money is being paid out for those glowing reviews. Right. Uh, so make your own, make your own, uh, make your own decisions based on, you know. Just be yep. smart about it. All Just be smart about it. Just be smart. Now, uh, you actually mentioned quite a few sites. Um, w- what are they? There's HeliNation.com. Yep. HeliNation Facebook group. Yep. Is there anything else? Um, well, it's Hel- we have HeliNation Facebook page, HeliNation Facebook group, uh, and then, of course, the HeliNation website. And that's really all we do now. I mean, we've got, um, um, you know, we sponsor, you know, the, the, uh, the Kansas City groups. Fantastic. So if you're down anywhere... Uh, near the Kansas City area, the group is unbelievable. We actually have our own field down there now. Since we, since you're gone, we have the Cam- we have the Heli Nation field. Oh, in nice. Kansas City, those guys are awesome. You wait, you need to get them on podcast. Get okay. you know, the John Herberts and, and and Herbie. These guys, all these guys, you need to get them. Um, Kevin, you need to get these guys on. Um, big personalities, big. They're awesome. Uh, they came into Chicago for an event over the winter in, in the dome. Oh, nice. And uh, we sponsored the group fully. And uh, these guys actually, I don't know how they manage it, but they actually got um, uh, Missouri or whatever, Kansas City, whatever, the town, city, uh, the government, to give them a field. Nice. Gave them a field for their group. And we sponsor them and take care of everything there for them. So they actually, it's the Heli Nation field. And uh, we couldn't be prouder of that. The uh, could be proud, I mean, they just, they do an unbelievable job. Great guys, but so much fun. Matter of fact, we're going to be down there. I think we're going to be down there sometime soon. The next major event, uh, Johnny and I are going on for the weekend to party with those guys and, and hang out for the event, the field, and all that. So we'll be down there to, to meet um, some of the guys that didn't come up and we didn't get to meet. Um, but that's pretty cool. Uh, so definitely check that out. If you're anywhere down there in the Missouri area or whatever, that's, uh, those guys are the guys you want to hook up with for that. Um, obviously, in Illinois, you've got uh, you know Chicago drone racers and you've got um, – the uh, Milwaukee, those guys all up there, and played Furies and all those guys, you know, the Noah and Michael. Um, and, uh, I mean, just honestly, what still blows my mind um, is how good, the good parts of the community, how good it really is, how great they are. I mean, these guys, some of these guys will do anything for you, help everyone else around around them. Um, I mean, just, it's amazing. You know, there's there's more, but anytime you have growth, right? You're going to have a bad apple or, or you're going to have some things out. It just is what it is. The bigger you get, you're going to have some of that. Um, but the, the great news is the, the mo- much majority of this industry and this business and, and, and the community is fantastic, and everyone will help everyone and just have a blast. I mean, so much fun. I mean, if it's, I mean, and, and guys, seriously, if you didn't come out to I.O. last year, you didn't come out to I.O. this year, plan I.O. for next year. If you do, don't do anything else, from an event standpoint, plan to come out to I.O. There's something for everybody. They had 10 tracks running this year. If you fly wings, if you fly, you know, it, it's they had an over 40 race. Yes, if I, if I, if the, I love that. Oh, uh, that I is that is cool. That. I was, you know, honest to God, I was. Uh, I, I wish that uh, I wish that I was I had the flight time in. Uh, to, and I, I think I think I am going to plan on making sure that I could do the. I personally could do the over 40 next year. The because uh, that just I mean I, that's just because I can't I can't touch these kids I mean that's just <laughs> hey I want to see an over forty drag race pure and simple there you, you go build your own quad <laughs> or like you have to build your quad during I O and just have a pure drag race of the over forties because you over forty guys you actually have the experience to build some pretty cool stuff like yeah, the, the yeah. younger folks they just build what's hot and yeah. like yeah and then they break it but like I have, pr- I have pretty good access to parts too so it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we might have to limit you. <laughs> no, I mean, my, my flying skills. I mean, as we got, you know, I think I told you at MDX. I mean, after uh, after you know the first two years, I was so busy. We got so busy that it just. I mean, I mean, I had to bring John in being last year as a GM because to run operations because I just can't even do all that, much less have any time to fly. And we said, you know, I told John this year. I said, John, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna do a lot more flying this year. And uh, you know that hasn't happened still. So still busy. It's, it's I got really cool toys that have no batteries. So matter of fact, Kevin's building me a, an Acrobrat. The uh, that uh, I'm hoping to be able to play with. 
Um, hey. You know, get an A battery through to be nice. <laughs> be nice. No, you definitely need to fly at least once out here, right? Yep, 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 absolutely. Cool, man. Hey, Patrick, it's always great to talk to you. You're always a wealth of knowledge. And, you know, the industry is definitely better off having something like Kelly Nation out there. We do try. We do try. appreciate that. Yep. So for anybody who uh, ever goes out to the event, definitely look at the Heli Nation booth. Say hi to Patrick or John or any of his folks. They're always super nice. And, uh, yeah, you can pick up some parts. Yep. All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate y'all. Thank you.